Welcome to P. Clark Calc, Practical Calculus for the Busy Math Student. And here we're going to look at an interesting application of area between curves from business calculus uh, known as the Gini Index. And that relies on a function called a Lorenz curve. Another application of area between curves in business calculus is called the Gini Index. And the Gini Index is meant to measure or quantify the, the distribution of wealth throughout a population. And its definition, the calculus definition, is given as 2 times the integral of x minus L of x. So L of x is called a Lorenz function. And it is a function that models proportion of the population to proportion of income owned. And because of that, the L of x function always has to have two points on it, 0, 0, because no, no people own zero of the income and one one because all of the people own all of the the income in the country so the the area between the two by definition would be upper minus lower which is y equals x minus l of x it turns out that l of x is always it's always uh, below y equals x it has to be if you think about it because if we look at a point here at say 0.5 the bottom half of a population is going to own much less than half of the wealth in that country. So so we know it's going to be x minus L of x there. And then the, the economists like to double that, and they have their reason for it to make the index, and we'll explain why as we go. But ultimately, it's an area between curves. So if we know what the, the L of x function is, then we can just go ahead and do it. So let's do the math of that first, and then we'll talk a little bit about what's that all mean. So, so here we have the Gini index of y equals x cubed, which ends up being it's about it's approximately the Lorenz function for the United States in the, around say 1930, and so we have that on our graph here. That's our lower curve, and then we have y equals x. So our our Gini value here is two times the integral from zero to one x minus x cubed dx. And we can just integrate that with simple rules here. So we have 2 times 1 half x squared minus 1 fourth x to the fourth from 0 to 1. Now, since the bounds by definition are 0 and 1, it's usually a pretty easy evaluation. So we use our fundamental theorem, upper minus lower. So we have 2 times 1 half minus 1 fourth antiderivative at 1 minus 0, the antiderivative at 0. So we end up there with a, a Gini index value of 2 times 1 fourth or 1 half. And many times they'll quantify that as either a decimal value or you may even see it if you go online and read up on this a little bit as a percentage. So what we've done then, in the calculus sense, is we've taken this region here between x and the Lorentz curve, and we've, we found that area and then essentially doubled it to obtain what's called the Gini index. So it turns out that the Gini index is always going to be a value between 0 and 1. When you go to interpret the Gini index, it's going to be between 0 and 1. And let's just look at the two extreme cases here. Let me bring some graphs in. Okay, so the most extreme case on the one end is when everyone receives exactly the same amount of the wealth in a nation, which this would be this would actually be perfect communism, which really doesn't happen anywhere if you think about it. But uh, in that case, in absolute communism, the Lorentz function would be y equals x, and that means that the area between the area between x and the Lorentz function. ends up being zero. We don't have to run an antiderivative to see that. And so the Gini index on this particular case is zero. So the closer to zero the Gini index is, the, the closer to, to a communist arrangement you would have. So what you see is like the more socialist nations in Europe say will have a lower Gini value typically than say the United States of America. Um, and if you go into a, a very communist nation, they'll have a very low Gini index. The other end of the spectrum is 
what I call despotism. Uh, it could be an absolute monarchy or a dictator or something on that order where nobody owns anything except for maybe one or a very small group of people, so a monarchy or an oligarchy. And in that case, your Lorentz function is going to be almost a right angle. I have x to the 1 millionth here I've graphed it, and so there the graph goes very, very quickly from y equals 0 to y equals 1. And essentially, we can look at it as a right triangle with an area of 1 half. So here, on this side of it, we have the Gini value. Now you see why they double it. The economists like to have that index between 0 and 1. So since the area itself has to be something between 0 and 1 half, doubling it puts it into this, this Gini index range of 0 to 1. So the absolute despotism monarchy or whatever you want to call it would have a genie value of one absolute communism where everyone gets exactly the same thing would be uh, a genie value of zero now in, in practice neither one of these exist in the world everyone just kind of has a level somewhere in between on the slider and you can actually take a look at the map of the world here and get some ideas as to, to what the trends are let me get that map up here so on this map the lighter the shade the, the lower the genie value so you see here that the European nations are mostly this lighter shade, this yellow shade, and that's closer to a Gini value 30. And if you look them up online, you'll see those values are usually somewhere in the 30 to 40 range. And then as we look over here, the United States of America is kind of in the middle, and that's in the 40 to 50 range. And then certain countries you think of as having very disproportional wealth. Um, Brazil comes to mind. People think of Brazil. You have very, very wealthy people and very, very poor people, usually in close proximity to each other. And we see your South Africa as well for many of the reasons that they had in apartheid and so on. So we have here very dark, very high Gini index values because of the disproportionate wealth distribution. So there's different reasons for why those numbers are what they are, and that's, you know, the social sciences can talk about that. But it's an interesting economic value. It's a quantification of this, and you can look it up online if you want to learn more. But ultimately, it's a, a not too difficult application, calculus-wise, of an area between two curves. If you'd like to learn more about business calculus or calculus in general, you can find those on my textbooks available on Amazon. You can also subscribe to the page if you like it. And until next time, I'm P. Clark.